Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Leanna Brinder, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now is Ian Fraser. He's the author of Inside RBS Shredded. So hi, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Well, coming all the way down from Scotland, you know, it's great to get um, some inside update on what's happening with uh, the bank that broke Britain. Um, so maybe going back a little back into history, we obviously know that RBS has been having rolling problems over the last few years, but where would you say it really started? Well, I think it really started in the 90s because in, the 90, in, in 1991 to 1992, the bank was, was seriously in trouble and it was virtually bankrupt. Uh, bad debts were escalating to the extent they were wiping out its profit and it almost went into loss-making mode in 91. So they, they had a very thorough kind of uh, overhaul of the entire bank led by a guy called George Mathewson. I think there were aspects of what he did that were very good, but there were aspects of what he did which were very bad, which actually almost sowed the seeds for the destruction that occurred under Fred Goodwin. Talking about uh, Fred Goodwin, Fred the Shred, yes. I mean, how, I mean, how did um, his behaviour, maybe um, upper management, perpetuate the problems that were you know, being fostered at RBS? One of the key errors that he made was to pursue scale for its own sake. He was desperate to protect the bank from takeover and he believed that the best way of achieving that was to just grow the balance sheet and through acquisitions and through organic growth, i.e. lending. But I think, I think that this almost became an obsession for Fred and his management team. Fred also ruled by what's been called a reign of terror or a, a suddenly ruled by fear to the extent that his, his immediate uh, reports were actually quite scared of Fred and they were very scared of missing targets because that, you know, that was absolute anathema in Fred's book even if it displayed caution on their part of their business unit. So what actually, what actually tended to happen was they were set very stretching targets and then in order to achieve those targets, there was a risk they would cut corners or push the envelope. And I think that is one of the things that happened under Fred Goodwin in the eight years that he was chief executive. When Stephen Hester obviously uh, stepped up to the mantle after Fred the Shred left, um, of course there's been a lot of scandals that have come out, which they say are legacy issues. But how did you view Hester's reign, which albeit short one, but how did you um, see his, did he change the way management culture was there? How do you felt he handled the libel fixing scandal and of course lots of the mis-selling um, stuff that came out? Contrary to popular belief, Stephen has, to, has actually got a quite a mixed legacy at RBS. I think he did one thing well, which was to reduce the balance sheet. You know, he, he slashed it by 900 billion, which is a massive reduction in the balance sheet of RBS. But I think in terms of the corporate culture, he was a disaster. Almost every single person I've spoken to who currently or is at the bank or has recently left the bank said that the culture became even more poisonous under Stephen Hester than it had been under Fred. And I think that's, I was very surprised actually to hear this because I, that wasn't the impression one, one would naturally reach having you know, seen what Stephen was like. But it seems to have been the case. Uh, he didn't really tackle the cultural problems. I think that's one of, the, one of his key, key errors. He also, well, you know, during his four year, well, how long was it? It was five years as the chief executive from 08 through to 2013. He, you know, the share price actually halved. It was 650 at the time of the original bailout. By the time he left, it was three pounds. So share price halved. So that wasn't a huge success from share price performance in share price performance terms. Um, and the profit, you know, that there were no profits, there's no dividends, you know, it's still a basket case, it's still a zombie bank, so it's not been cured. You know, now we've got Ross McEwen, I mean, is he any different either? I mean, what, what is next for RBS in terms of the management and culture side? Because it doesn't seem to have really changed. One of the most disturbing things I've heard about him recently is that um, he's very keen to, to, to axe the branch network. I think they've currently got 1,900 in the UK, and I, I think he wants to at least half that to about, you know, a thousand or eleven hundred, but he actually has set targets to the branch branch staff at different levels within the branches to reduce footfall. So he's he's giving them new goals on their performance management uh, appraisal system to actually reduce footfall inside the branches through signing people up to just digital banking, through use of uh, on, uh, more online stuff, and. Um, and, and, and this, is, this is so that he can then 
subsequently say, oh, well, there's not enough people using these branches, so we can close them down. So it's a way of sort of engineering a situation and manipulating the numbers, potentially, which makes it look as if branches aren't being very widely used, which enables him to justify closing branches. And I find that quite disturbing. I met, uh, I, I, I met Ross McCune for the first time last week at the AGM, and he was incredibly charming, very bubbly, and quite you know, enthusiastic about what he's doing. But I think he has a very, very difficult task. Um, you know, he, he, he has two, two main things to do. You know, one is to cut costs by approximately five billion. Uh, sorry, is it five billion? Yeah, five billion over the next uh, four years. And that is a massive challenge, you know. How, and, but the other side, he wants to improve customer service and make customers feel they're getting a, a better experience from being with this bank. The two things are almost sort of uh, uh, contradictory because if you're cutting costs, you're closing branches, you're axing stuff, you're demoralizing the workforce, it's very hard at the same time to actually ensure that customers get a better, a, a better experience from, from being with RBS. And then there's also the area which I'm sure you're familiar with, which is this whole area of the treatment of distressed uh, corporate borrowers and SME borrowers, which, which is you know, where one continues to hear real horror stories about the bank behaving atrociously towards these people. They don't seem to, they, they, they seem just to, to pretend that it's not happening. And it's just very odd that. I think it's, it's strange. But I mean, thank you very much for your time today. It's been uh, fantastic. And we hopefully will uh, look forward to some more positive news next time we meet. So do I. Well, I, ho I hope there will be some more positive news. I really do. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. And that was Ian Fraser, the author of Shredded Inside RBS.